So raising NAD levels to increase the lifespan and improve health and fitness is one of the most interesting areas of anti-aging research. And no doubt there's a lot of expensive NAD booster supplements out there on the market right now, but what about niacin? Lowly inexpensive niacin. Can niacin also raise NAD levels? In this video, I'm gonna show you some evidence that may make you think twice about this very interesting vitamin. Now, before we go any further, I've previously done videos on other expensive uh, NAD booster supplements such as NMN, and I've even shown you some natural ways to raise your NAD levels. Most of them don't even require dietary supplements, but let's stick a pin in them for right now and talk about niacin. Yeah, vitamin B3, niacin, the vitamin you may have not thought of about as maybe doing this, there is now some research on this. And that was one of the criticisms I had about the research on NAD boosters. How come nobody ever compared them to niacin? And it turns out now there is some proof. Here is the proof. Study just came out, niacin cures systemic NAD deficiency and improves muscle performance in adult onset mitochondrial myopathy. These people have problems with their mitochondria where their muscles are weak, they're in pain, and basically they gave niacin. So what I'm gonna do here is I've read this study and I'll link to it if you wanna check it out for yourself, but I'm gonna summarize the study and the study findings, sum it up with uh, some take home messages so you can understand this better. So here we go. Here's the basics of the study. It's a small investigation, only 15 people. I like the fact that they range in age from 17 to 70, so young and old people. They've got basically 10 people who are essentially healthy and five people who have mitochondrial problems. Again, they're in, they have muscle pain, muscle weakness, some eye issues, et cetera. So again, not a lot of people in this investigation. For those who are curious, this involved mostly women. It was mostly women in the mitochondrial myopathy group, okay? Now, what did they do? So they gave them niacin, regular niacin, nothing special about it, started them at 250 milligrams a month and every month increased them by 250 until they got to one gram a day, 1,000 milligrams a day. So it took them four months to get to that 1,000 milligrams and then they followed through taking 1,000 milligrams a day for 10 months. They took the niacin at night with food, something to think about, and they used a time release niacin. So good thing about this is it's a pretty long study. It lasted almost a year. So uh, they, they're gonna, they got some interesting results that I'll share with them here. So what, what the heck happened? So in the people with mitochondrial problems, taking niacin led to an increase in NAD levels, which they said was t twice over what they saw in, in the beginning, at the start of the investigation. So it appeared to double the NAD levels in the people who started out with mitochondrial problems and low levels of NAD to begin with. It also, niacin also increased the NAD in the muscle, restored it, restored it to that of the healthy people after 10 months. So by the end of the 10 months, uh, these individuals who were taking niacin, their NAD levels were about the same as those of healthy people. And they also interestingly measured the niacin in the, or excuse me, the NAD levels in the blood, and they were up to eight times higher uh, than, again, they were in the beginning. All right, so that's the results of NAD. What about the mitochondria? So here's where things get interesting. In the people with mitochondrial problems, okay, niacin increased myo mitochondria production, as they like to say in the anti-aging world, mitochondrial biogenesis. That's fancy talk for making more mitochondria. So in the people who had the mitochondrial problems, it increased their mitochondrial production, yeah, but it did not appear to increase the functioning of those mitochondria. That's interesting because you do seem to uh, have seen some improvements and they, they may not be linked to better functioning mitochondria. It appears that niacin may bypass the mitochondria and exert some influences, which I think more studies need to be done. So let's talk about some of those, those studies. So what, what happened here is niacin 
also appeared to decrease the visceral fat. And that's the fat um, inside the muscle. If you ever go to the supermarket, you'll see like steak that, steak that has marbling. That's called visceral fat. That's the hard fat that doesn't really jiggle when people move. And so it decreased the visceral fat by about 25% in the people with the mitochondrial problems. Interestingly, it did not decrease subcutaneous fat in those people. Subcutaneous is the jiggly fat, okay? Now, fortunately, visceral fat is the worst type to have, okay? So it decreased the worst fat, didn't appear to just decrease that jiggly subcutaneous fat. Ironically, though, in the healthy people who didn't have the mitochondrial problems, it did appear to decrease that subcutaneous fat a little bit. I didn't give you the number because it was nothing really to write home about. And then the other point here that I want to draw your attention to is that in, in the people who had the mitochondrial problems, their liver fat, the fat around their liver, decreased almost by half. That's important because there is a condition out there called non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, which is pretty serious because it's a prelude to cirrhosis of the liver and, and other bad things. So decreasing uh, the fat around the liver is, is pretty, pretty, pretty big, th big thing to pay attention to. What I would say, however, is for those who just paid attention to that last thing I said, and you have liver problems, you want to talk to your doctor before taking niacin supplements. Niacin is not without its side effects. And one of those side effects, if you take too much of it, could be liver problems. So it could be a double-edged sword. So keep that in the back of your mind. In terms of muscle strength, I thought this was kind of interesting. They tested the strength of the people before and after the study. And again, they looked at the people with the mitochondrial problems. I call them the patients. And they noted that in the upper body muscles, the, the arms, the abs, etc., their upper body muscle strength improved. And just you know, for fun, I'm giving you here what you may hear about if you hear about this investigation. It was the, abs, the abdominal muscle strength was about 10 times higher uh, than when they started out before. That said, most of the other muscles in the body of the upper body muscles, they only increase by about twice. Let me stop you right there. If you're healthy and you're taking niacin supplements, niacin is not gonna double your muscle strength. I'm just giving you that, that, that lowdown right there. So don't take this to improve your muscle strength. Remember, we're looking at people with mitochondrial issues to begin with. We're not talking about the healthy people here, okay, who don't have any kind of uh, mitochondrial issues. In the, in the patients, again, no, no real increase in strength in lower body muscles. That's kind of interesting that upper body might see an improvement where lower body did not. They did a test called the six minute walking test. Basically, they tested them to see how far they could walk after six minutes. And they saw a little bit of an improvement in them, but interestingly enough, that does not appear to be related to an improvement in aerobic capacity. In other words, their heart and lungs didn't appear to be able to take in oxygen any better. So what's responsible for this increase in walking test time, six minute walking test time? You know, it, it, again, it's gonna take some extra investigations to figure that one out. So my thoughts on all this go like this. Um, NAD, niacin, appears to raise NAD levels in people who begin the study with low levels. You're not gonna see this increase in NAD levels like what I told you about at the beginning, maybe not so much in people who are quote unquote healthy. If it works, if niacin works, it may work better in people who start out with low levels of NAD to begin with. Some thoughts about this investigation. It's not a double-blind placebo-controlled study. That's the best kind of study. This is not one of them. Everybody got niacin, the healthy people, the, the not-so-healthy people. And it is interesting. There were some interesting observations here, but it should be followed up with a larger study and a double-blind placebo-controlled study. Again, small study, only five people with mitochondrial problems. I'd like to see this followed up with maybe 100 people, 50, 50 placebo people, 50 pl people who maybe take uh, niacin, and let's follow them for, again, 10 months and see what happens. The best niacin dosage to help the mitochondria and raise NAD levels. This, I think, is one of the $64,000 questions here. We don't know. We do not know the optimal niacin dosage to help the mitochondria or raise NAD levels in people with mitochondrial problems. I wanted to bring this up because they, they basically gave people 1,000 milligrams of niacin for, ten, for six months. They started out with 250, gradually increased it to 1,000, and continued that you know, until the end of the study. Study. I'm not recommending everybody start out and start taking 250 or even 1,000 milligrams of niacin 
uh, they basically took a guess at what they thought was the optimal amount, and that was based on lowering cholesterol levels. Niacin can have an effect on triglyceride levels and LDL and cholesterol, and that's basically why they chose 1,000 milligrams. That doesn't necessarily mean 1,000 is right for everybody, and, I, that's one, and that's why I really want you to talk to your doctor if you're going to be considering niacin supplements, high-dose niacin supplements. And the other reason is niacin, especially taking a lot of it, is not without its side effects. Again, as I mentioned, high-dose niacin could even affect the liver enzymes, could affect blood sugar levels. And even if you're taking medications, niacin can interact with medications as well. So I always want to give you that caveat and tell you to talk to your doctor uh, before running out to the store and buying niacin supplements. So what do you think? There is the proof, yes, niacin does raise NAD levels. Are you going to chuck out your high potency, expensive NAD booster supplements? Let me know in the comments below. Until next time, gang, I'm Joe Cannon. Go out, be safe, and where you can, try to make a difference.